Scoop, you might think that after what you have done, you might think I hate you. No matter how badly you screwed up, I'll never, ever hate you as a character. I've grown attached to you and your crewmates to not let me express any remote hate for any of you. But... But I can't ignore that what you did to your crewmates is just unacceptable. And I had to express disappointment for how you acted very toxic to them. It was very hard for me to do this to you because you are normally like this. I don't do all this just because I hate you. I do this because I appreciate you as a sensible and reliable team leader of the Kandu crew who is not perfect all the time. <sighs> I care about you, Scoop. Don't ever believe to yourself that I hate you. everyone, Heartclaw Productions here. I hope you enjoyed the little intro I made to open up this review. Today I'll be tackling an interesting case of a movie from a series that I have missed out on during my childhood. Yes, I am going to refer to this as a movie because saying special just doesn't click with me saying it out loud. Anyways, Bob the Builder. Something about this series to me is that I have never grown up watching the show when I was in my younger years and I experienced a good chunk of it during my beginning years as an adult. To me, I felt like an idiot not watching the show during my childhood because watching the show has been a joy to watch as an adult. The stories were simple but enjoyable. The seven main characters were all lovable with their unique traits to stand out from each other. The stop motion animation makes all the characters very expressive and fluid. The music is very memorable and the voice acting in the UK dub is very enjoyable to listen to. Even though I am not from the UK, I just think the UK dub is how I watch the show most of the time. Since a good majority of you enjoyed my two Bob the Builder videos I have made so far, I am going to review a movie from this series. But which one? Well, if you can tell from the little opening I did, I am going to review Snowed Under. The Bobblesburg Winter Games. Here's a little bit of history about how I got into the movie in the first place. When I was binge watching random episodes while I was on break in school, I came across clips from a random playlist that seemed to connect with each other. The playlist was labeled Bob the Builder Snowed Under, and I was pretty curious how they are connected with each other. I looked up on the Bob the Builder wiki about the name Snowed Under, until I noticed that it was an actual movie in the Bob the Builder series, kind of having the format like Thomas and Friends have when it comes to movies. It was about 52 minutes long, so I decided to check it out for myself in the UK dub out of curiosity, and I really enjoyed it the first time I viewed it. But when I binge watched it a couple of more times, I noticed that the flaws within the movie became more apparent as time went on when I got myself attached to the main five machines. And this is where my review will be an interesting case to tackle because Snowed Under is a movie where I display a lot of different emotions while watching it. Happiness, anger, sadness, annoyance, and many others in between. So yeah, that's my history on how I got into the movie in the first place. And now, let's dive in and how I think Snowed Under is a memorable mess of a movie. <laughs> Did 
This is my first time reviewing a movie, so I'll try and shorten my summarization as best I can. It won't be like my honorable mentions of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic reviews, where I recap the entire episode from the first scene to the end. I am going to recap the core elements within the plot of the movie, just to save time because I don't want to take forever with just summarizing this 52 minute movie. But I'll mention moments that I enjoy or dislike that aren't mentioned in the recap when I am giving my thoughts on the movie as a whole. That's all I'm going to say so I don't waste time just to summarize this movie. In our memorable mess adventure in Snowed Under, Bob and his team are tasked to help build the winter courses and a log cabin at Bobblesburg, as Wendy is going to be participating over there. Scoop proceeded to take the position as team leader and hoped to not let Bob down. As the machines got onto the ferry, Spud and Pilcher proceeded to be stowaways to join them on the trip. When the special machines couldn't arrive safely due to a snowstorm, all things might have seemed hopeless. But one machine named Benny survived, and the machine set off to work. Things went well as expected as first. Until Scoop displays a nasty change within his behavior towards Muck, Dizzy, and Rolly when they are distracting him. Even when Scoop snapped at Rolly for causing an accident. <laughs> I'll talk about that scene later. The machines find their own ways to have fun while Scoop doesn't want their help. Like Rolly has his own little side plot where he learns how to yodel with Yana. Things get worse from there when Muck tries to help Scoop and Benny, but Scoop always seems to push him away just so he couldn't steal his position as team leader, while Benny slowly becomes irritated with his toxic behavior while they were running late on finishing the courses. All things break loose when the machines have a fallout by agreeing to not work with each other again. Scoop continues to work by himself with his toxic attitude until Karma gets back at him as he causes a mess with the ice rink. Scoop regrets himself big time for his actions and tries to reconcile with his crewmates to help him again. Muck, Dizzy, Rolly, and Benny eventually forgave Scoop and they got the job done. The Winter Games went according to plan as Wendy won the ski run and Bob praises Scoop for having the guts to admit his huge mistake in the long run. The movie ends with Scoop having a dream where he and his crewmates won the Dream Winter Games and is glad to have the best building machine team in the world. After re-watching this movie a couple of times, my opinion on it never changes no matter how many times I have seen it throughout the past couple of months. I really enjoy it with what it is trying to do and succeeding in some areas. It tries to pull off a scenario where the can -Do crew aren't perfect as a unit by not agreeing with each other all the time and having one of those falling out moments. But sometimes a new idea to look for conflict isn't always a good thing when it is put into a position on handling its characters, especially with the main character of this movie. Let's talk about Scoop, and why I love hate him in this movie. Scoop in this movie is where most of my different emotions come into play when I watched his characterization throughout the 52 minutes. At the beginning, I feel hopeful and sympathetic to him, when he is put in charge of a much larger task in another town. I do feel for Scoob when the task to help build the winter courses with his crewmates is a much bigger deal than any other job and others have done in the past. The first act of the movie did a good job on portraying Scoob being excited, but a little bit cautious of himself, because it represents how he doesn't want to disappoint Bob while being at Bobblesburg. Scoop's relationship with Benny at the beginning is just adorable as heck and it delivers the fluff moments for my enjoyment. The two diggers giving each other nicknames based on the fruit of the banana are just too pure for me to not stop smiling whenever they are together throughout the ending of the first act. Scoop seemed to start off on the right hands at the beginning. What can go wrong? <laughs> Kill me. So when 
muck, Dizzy, and Rolly entered into the plot starting the middle act. Scoop's characterization took a change for the worse. Let's get this infuriating scene out of the way because I don't want to lose my sanity. This scene alone, where Scoop called Rolly an insult where he accidentally squashed a mogul bump? I freaking hate this scene. Scoop had no reason to skull Rolly for breaking something that can be fixed in like two minutes. But he did it anyway just because Rolly wasn't thinking straight. Scoop calling my favorite character an insult to his image as a steamroller affected me so hard that I just wanted to shout so loud that my brain explodes. What's worse is that Scoop had to bring up that incident during the fallout scene just to make Rolly look bad all because of a simple accident. That was really scummy on Scoop's part, let me tell you all. What hurts within the scene for me is that Scoop insulted his roommate. The one he sleeps with every night throughout the series. They act like close friends while having an adult roommate kind of relationship that is pretty enjoyable to see in small doses. So seeing Scoop calling Rolly words that felt like insults really makes me hate this scene so much. I wouldn't hate this scene so much if Scoop properly apologizes to Rolly for what he said to him. But his apology was so half-assed that it didn't feel that sincere enough. I wish this scene had more of a point in the story if Rolly was affected by the insult and feels salty towards Scoop in his presence and doesn't forgive him completely at the near end when the ice rink needs to be fixed. I wouldn't be too hard on this scene if it had a point in the movie as it could represent a good testing moment between two close friends. But no, the scene doesn't. It happened just for shock value to start Scoop's toxic behavior. <laughs> Screw this scene! And worst of all, screw Scoop! Okay. I might have gone too far. I'm sorry, Scoop. <sighs> Let's continue. Scoop's behavior begins to worsen as he starts to push away his crewmates on purpose, especially to Muck. Muck didn't deserve being bossed around by Scoop because he was only trying to help but also have fun. I don't blame Benny for getting irritated with him as the movie progresses, by the way. Even after the infamous fallout scene, Scoop still acts like a toxic freak when he argued with Benny and even scolded Pilchard when he was being corrected on building the ice rink by himself, and even lied to Wendy that his crewmates were helping with the job. This is why hating a lovable character is just very hard to do when they do out-of-character moments like these. Scoop's behavior throughout the middle act was just mostly blemishes of annoyance, while one moment made me lose my sanity. But I'm not gonna talk about it anymore. They are good still, but I wasn't too upset by all the rest of the middle act. This was the part that the middle act might have destroyed my enjoyment of the movie after my couple of rewatches. But it wasn't. Do you think I continue my disdain towards Scoop? Well... When Scoop messed things up big time, when the ice rink became a mess, my emotions changed from annoyance to actual sadness when I caught a glimpse of Scoop sobbing. This made me stop myself from mocking him from being a toxic freak because he was admitting that he messed up big time and he is letting his emotions express it. My sympathy for Scoop came back when he tried to make up with Muck, Dizzy, Rolly, and even Benny after being nasty to them until they all eventually came back together to help finish the ice rink. Bob had every right to praise Scoop for having the guts to admit his huge mistake throughout this movie. After the movie ended, my likeness towards Scoop grew even more bigger than before. 
because despite the middle act feeling like I sat through a main character being toxic for 20 plus minutes, it was worth getting through it because it has Scoop go through character development. I see this as character development for Scoop because he needed to learn to accept others' help and not be under too much pressure to complete the job. It wasn't fun to sit through Scoop being a truck freak, but it represents the phases to showcase good character development. Now, you might think this conflict might have come from an earlier episode from Season 3. The feel of it is pretty similar to Scoop and Charge, but the reasonings are different. In the Season 3 episode, Scoop didn't do anything to help complete the job with Muck and Lofty alone. He wasn't that much of a help by just talking and giving out directions. In Snowed Under, on the other hand, Scoop tries to do everything by himself while refusing anyone's help while the situation he was in is a much bigger deal than repairing a shed. That is why Snowed Under's conflict for Scoop might look familiar, but it has a different reasoning behind it. Scoop throughout the movie is what made me display multiple emotions all at once. I sympathize with him during the beginning and ending acts, while I just didn't care for him when he is expressing his toxic attitude towards his crewmates during the middle act. But I would never hate Scoop as a character, no matter what. He deserves to get karma getting back at him for being a toxic freak towards his crewmates and for making my experience a hard time. But I was willing to forgive him when he was open to admit that he messed up in the long run. I still love Scoop as a character because he develops like what a human being does and learns to not make this mistake again. So yeah, that's my... might have been too long... thoughts on Scoop throughout the movie. There aren't that many more flaws I have with the movie aside from Zoomer having almost no character whatsoever until he gets more spotlight in Project Build It. But the movie's flaws are how Scoop represents a mix of some good and most of the bad in the movie. But now, let's talk about the other stuff I like in the movie. One way to start with the positives of this movie is that I love Benny as the movie's newbie. Benny is just a precious little bean that I just adore so much with how he looks up to Scoop and gives him the playful nickname of Big Banana. And I like how he is talking some common sense into Scoop when he is not letting Muck help them or when Scoop is doing everything by himself. It really shows that Benny is not naive and blind to Scoop's change of character in the middle act despite being younger. The pacing of the movie is very well paced, with every scene going smoothly without being rushed or being too slow. Like during Scoop's emotional moment, I do like how the movie decided to slow itself down to just breathe and take in within the moment. The scenes of filler for the most part were enjoyable in terms of humor or just good usage of small bits of time for the characters to just vibe in the snow like Dizzy ice skating and Muck discovering snowboarding. Most of the humor comes from Spud, and he always makes a piece of Bob the Builder media enjoyable. Spud just enjoys himself crashing along with Bob at the hotel, taking advantage of the room service, being on the job as a waitress's assistant, and even pulling off a perfect ski jump at the end. Yana's goat, Eli, was funny because of how he would just not leave her alone. And whenever she tells him to stay or get lost, he acts like a smart aleck. It's like Eli doesn't give a crap, and I find it funny. One of my favorite parts of the movie is Rolly having his own little plot of learning how to yodel. Seeing my favorite character doing something that relates to him always brings me a smile, just like in A Christmas to Remember. Early on in the movie, when arriving at Bobblesburg, Rolly tries to yodel, but finds it to be pretty hard. I like how this scene was set up for later on. Rolly learning from Yana was very enjoyable with how she helped him master the yodel and make the echoes pleasing to my ears. This goes to show that Neil Morrissey is very talented at pulling off singing and even yodeling for the lovable steamroller. 
Even though the machines having a fallout felt very shocking to me when watching the movie every time, I do like how the movie is using that concept to represent how the Kandu crew aren't perfect all the time as a unit. My second to last praise for the movie is that the animation and voice acting are all done superbly. Despite movies in modern times suck when they are making snowy environments, Bubblesburg in this movie makes the snowy backgrounds look beautiful and stand out from Bodsville in the movie. And the voice acting is amazing as always, but I want to give extra praise to Rob Rackstraw for putting his all into Scoop. Despite what Rob has to work with, he really did a fantastic job displaying Scoop's emotions throughout the movie. He actually makes Scoop sound angry while making the shouting feel real, but his best acting moment, in my opinion, is during Scoop's emotional moment. Rob made Scoop sound choked up while talking, because that is what anyone sounds like when they cry. It goes to show that an actor who enjoys playing their characters for years can put their all in the voice when a character goes through the emotions. And finally, the ending is very satisfying. Scoop having a dream about him and his crewmates winning medals while a remix of the theme plays just really caps off the movie very well. In summary, Snowed Under is a movie where it is mostly enjoyable with its good pacing, humor, voice acting, and animation, but it can be a pain to get through when it comes to Scoop being toxic throughout a good chunk of the movie. This movie can be viewed as a good watch from start to finish with good character development for Scoop, or others think it might be terrible with how Scoop being toxic can destroy a viewer's enjoyment of the movie. To me, it is a movie that is a mess to enjoy. A lot has got to be desired, but the experience while watching this movie is what makes it enjoyable at the same time. I know this movie might not be for everyone who is fans of Bot the Builder, but if you are able to see it as major character development for Scoop, then don't hesitate and check it out for yourself. If I was to rank this movie in a worst to best Bob the Builder movies list, then I would put it in fourth place because there is a lot wrong with the movie, but I can't hate it for what it tries to do with a lot of good elements in it. I give this movie a 7.5 out of 10. The flaws are very apparent in the movie, but the good outweighs the bad, and it serves as good character development for Scoop. I hope you all made it this far into the video, and enjoyed this interesting review on the first Bob the Builder movie I have ever gotten myself exposed to, and how I just have so much to talk about this movie. It felt like a smooth but bumpy ride while re-watching the movie and making the script. That is my final thoughts on Snowed Under. I might review some of the other Bob the Builder movies in the future if you all enjoyed this review. Press the like button and comment down below on what you think of the movie. I'll see you all later!